So we're looking at the utility maximization method and how we ultimately decide how much of particular goods we are willing and able to buy. So we're maximizing the benefit given the costs and constraints. So here we're measuring that uh, benefit using marginal utility, the extra happiness, and we're measuring that in utils. And we have to compare that to the cost, which is the price of the particular items as we consider more of one item, more of another. We are constrained by our budget. And so here we're continuing our video game and phone apps example. So what you see here is the budget line that represents the combination of phone apps and video games we can afford. So in our example, the price of a video game was $60. The price of an app was two. And we started out with a budget. We had income set aside of $300. So if we spent all of our money on apps, we could get 150. If we spent all our money on video games, we could get five or some combination of the two. Let's use the utility maximization method to figure out where on this budget line is that optimal consumption point. We're using what is called the optimal purchasing rule to figure out how much of each item we would be willing and able to buy. So let's think this through theoretically and then let's look at it in terms of this actual example. So we're looking at bang for your buck. If the extra happiness of an app per dollar spent on the app, so your happiness per dollar is more with the apps than the extra happiness per dollar of video games. So if we're getting more bang for our buck, more happiness per dollar with phone apps than video games, we should do what? We should get apps. So if we're getting more bang for our buck with the phone apps, then we should be getting more phone apps. We should be moving up that budget line to higher level of phone apps. But what if the extra happiness for the phone apps per dollar we spend on the phone apps is less than the extra happiness for the video game per dollar of the video game? So we have to look not just at the extra happiness of a game and a phone app, but we have to recognize that video games cost a lot more than phone apps. So we have to consider the happiness per dollar. Well, if we're getting more bang for our buck, more happiness per dollar with video games than we are with phone apps, what should we do? Well, we should get video games. So in that case, we're moving along the budget line towards more video games. So if we're looking at the trade-off between more phone apps, less phone apps, more video games, less video games, well, we can't just afford more of both. We're constrained by the budget line. So where do we end up? Well, if we're getting more bang for our buck with apps, we get apps. If we're getting more bang for our buck with video games, we get video games. So where do we stop? Where is that optimal consumption point? Well, that's our optimal purchasing rule. The optimal purchasing rule says you stop when the extra happiness per dollar of the two are the same. Because if they're not the same, you should get more of one and less of the other. So our optimal purchasing rule says if the bang for our buck with apps is more, get apps. If the bang for our buck with video games is more, get video games and stop when they're equal. So let's work through a math problem and see if we can find this optimal consumption point using our optimal purchasing rule. All right. So here we have our video games and we need to fill out the quantity of apps that goes with it. We're constrained to our budget line. So we recognize that if we buy zero video games, we can put all our money into phone apps and at $2 a piece and $300 set aside, we can get 150 of them. So really we're constructing those points that are on the budget line. If we get one video game at 60 bucks, 
then we have $240 left for apps and we can get 120 of them. So we can fill out the quantity of apps related to the quantity of video games. Now notice we are putting only the points on the budget line. Yes, we could choose combinations that had apps and video games that did not use all our 300 bucks. But remember, we like video games and phone apps. So more of both is better than less. So let's fill out the rest. 150, 120, 90, 60, 30. And if we spend all our money on video games, five video games at 60 bucks a piece, 300, zero apps. Now we have to consider the bang for our buck, that marginal utility per dollar. So we go from having zero video games to one. The extra happiness is 1,200 utils. And so the bang for our buck is 1,200 divided by the price of 60, and the marginal utility per dollar is 20. When we go and get the second video game, the extra happiness that we get is 780 utils, less than before. So we take 780 and we divide by the cost of the video game, 780 divided by 60 and we get 13. Okay, so take a moment and fill out the rest of the column. So you're taking the marginal utility divided by the price. 540 divided by 60. 420 divided by 60, 360 divided by 60. So now we have our bang for our buck when it comes to video games, but we have to compare that to the bang for our buck that we're getting when we got phone apps. Because remember, we enjoy both the phone apps and the video games, and we want to use our money for entertainment. So if we're going to buy more of one, we can't afford as much of the other. If we're going to buy more of the other, we can't afford as much of the first. So we need the marginal utility per dollar for the other good or second best option as well. But we need to move the other direction. So we need to start down here at zero apps and look at what happens when you get more of them. So here, we're not just getting one more item at a time, we're getting them in increments of 30. And so we need to ensure that's included in our calculation for our bang for our buck. So here, when we go from having zero apps to 30 apps, the extra happiness is 600 utils. That cost is $2 per app, but we have to recognize that we're actually getting 30 apps, so the cost is not $2 for the extra 600 utils of happiness. We have two times the 30 apps. So we have 600 divided by two times 30, 600 divided by 60, we're getting 10 utils of happiness per dollar spent. All right, we go from having 30 apps to 60 apps. Again, we're getting 30 more apps. The extra happiness we're getting is 540. So we take our marginal utility, we divide it by the $2 cost of the app, and we multiply it times the fact that we're getting 30 apps to get that extra happiness of 540. So 540 divided by two times 30 is nine. So take a moment and fill out the rest. Again, you're taking the marginal utility divided by the price. Just make sure you're recognizing that if you're getting more than one item, you're gonna pay the price for all of those items. So that price that you're dividing by needs to include the extra 30 units. Okay, so 360 divided by two times 30 is six. And we can do 180 divided by two times 30, which gives us three. When we go from having 120 apps to 150 apps, we are gaining 30 more apps. But at this point, that's so many apps, we can't even keep them all straight on our phone. So there's no extra value to us. And if there's no extra value to us, then the bang for our buck is zero 
divided by 2 times 30, which of course is 0. So at some point, there's no extra value to us to have you know, more than 120 apps. And so we show that here. All right, now we need to figure out using the optimal purchasing rule, where is that optimal consumption point? How much of the video games and the phone apps are we willing and able to buy? Okay, so let's start here. If we get one more video game, the bang for our buck is 20. Okay. And so we are comparing that to the fact that in order to get one more video game, we would have to give up the ability to buy 30 apps. Okay, so if we do that, we give up 30 apps, that bang for our buck here is three. So bang for our buck for video games is 20, bang for our buck for, for video games is 20, for apps is three. Well, obviously we're getting much more bang for our buck, more happiness per dollar with video games. And that makes sense, because if we don't have any, then we're really valuing um, those video games. So if the bang for our buck is more with video games, according to our optimal purchasing rule, bang for our buck is more with video games, we should do what? We should get video games. So here we're going to move this direction and get more video games. Well, we can go the other direction as well. So what if we have zero phone apps and we get 30? Well, in order to do that, that means that we can't afford to buy five video games. When we have 30 apps, the max we can get is four video games. So when we do that, going from zero to 30 phone apps, the extra happiness per dollar is 10. Because we already have lots of these video games, the happiness or bang for our buck with the video games is seven utils per dollar. So which one is bigger? 10 utils per dollar, seven utils per dollar. Well, that's the bigger number. We're getting more bang for our buck having the phone apps. And that makes sense because we didn't have any phone apps. So those first couple are really valuable. We had more video games, so not as valuable. So if we're getting more bang for our buck with the phone apps than we are with the video games, more with the apps than the video games, we should do what? We should get the apps. Okay, so then we would move this direction. So where do you stop? Remember, we're moving along that budget line, trying to find that optimal consumption point, the amount of video games and phone apps that maximizes the benefits given the cost and constraints. So where do we stop? According to our optimal purchasing rule, we stop when they are equal. So where is that in our example here, here, and here? Notice they are equal. So then the optimal combination that we end up with is three video games and 60 apps. Now, it's just a coincidence that this has a marginal utility of 540 and this has a marginal utility of 540. If the prices were different, $60 and $2, that wouldn't be the case. What we're really looking at is bang for your buck. So here at the marginal utility per dollar of video games is equal to the marginal utility per dollar of apps. And so that tells us where then is the optimal consumption point. We could work through the same process, change the price of the video games, and find a new optimal consumption point. Just like we did in our previous videos, we changed the price of the video game, it changed the budget line, and it changed that optimal consumption points, which ultimately we turned into the demand curve. You could do the same thing here, in which case we would change this budget line that changes the combinations that you see on this table that we would choose from. Again, we find the optimal point and derive that demand curve. So you can use this method instead of the indifference curve method to come up with the demand curve. So what you need to know here really is what is the optimal purchasing rule and how does it work to help find 
the optimal consumption points and derive demand.